Hello folks and welcome back to the Cards and Castles YouTube channel. My name is Redmaster today, joined by Red Team developer Cyberbob, as well as our first place tournament winner for the Plight of the Pantheon, Spaff. Uh, Spaff claimed an incredible uh, first place in a grueling series of matches, which uh, I think we got most of those on, on the uh, replay side. So if you want to go check that out, you can check out some of the Plight of the Pantheon videos that we have to kind of catch up and see Spath's progress. We're going to talk to just Spath today about, well, that tournament run. See how he's feeling after it. See what he thinks about uh, just the game in general. So let's go ahead and, and talk to the man himself, uh, Spath. Welcome. How you doing? Thank you. I'm doing great. I'm excited to be on. Now, let's let's go ahead and, and break down that uh, that tournament win. Um, obviously, a lot of players competing. We had about, just about... A little, little over 80, 85 players, uh, which I think our highest attendance record ever for uh, a tournament like this. And so going into that, I mean, what compelled you to even enter in the first place? When you look at a field like that, when you look at the stakes that were put on the tournament like that, what's what's going through your head? So, I mean, as far as like why I wanted to sign up for the tournament, um, I actually got a handful of my friends into the game recently because I played this back in high school when it was Cards and Castles 1 and loved the game. And then, you know, I stopped playing a lot of games through college and then I looked it up recently and I was like, oh my God, there's a second one. So me and a handful of my buddies have been playing it for a little over a month-ish now. Um, and one of them is super on top of everything in the Discord, and when it got pinged, he pinged all of us, and I was like, well, I mean, I've never competed in a card game tournament before, so if there's one that I like enough like this, I, I might as well make it my first, and uh, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to give it a shot, because <laughs> I, I don't often compete in things online. And now that's that's a funny thing that you say that because we actually had um, our last interview we had Echo who mentioned that he was actually someone who was a very competitive gamer. So it's cool to see the dichotomy between I guess people who compete, people who are both competitive, very into the competition and want to win, and other people who are just kind of like want to give it a shot, want to see what it's about. And uh, to see that someone like that actually won is to me at least, very cool. Uh, showing that, you know, you don't have to be a very seasoned hardcore legend to, to win out in a tournament like this. You just gotta have some game knowledge, pick up a few cards, and then just go. And I think that's really what worked out for you quite well. Um, and so on that, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the deck choice that you rocked with. Um, now, I didn't catch all of your matches, Baff. Let's be honest. There were a lot of things going on. Um, but we did catch you rocking the, the yellow-black, the Crusader Necromancer build for the last half of the tournament. Now... Is that the color choice you went with for the entire run, or did you elect to kind of switch up and change something out uh, at some point during the tournament? Because uh, we we allowed players to change. I think that was a part that you know people kind of overlook. Um, but I don't know. Talk to me about what your what your choice was, or at least how your choice was made. Yeah, um, it was the deck that I entered with and stayed with throughout the whole run. Um, I didn't actually tech any cards in and out because it felt like it was running pretty consistent into the isolated tournament meta. Um, I didn't feel like any of the matchups I ran into uh, kind of like screamed for changes from the deck, like I needed to adjust to something in the middle of the tourney. Um, I had some ideas for if Final Strike... <laughs> came at me at all and it never did throughout the whole run so i was happy about that um but i was actually really nervous in the finals because uh the deck that echo ran i felt like had a lot of cards in it that um were as isolated cards problematic for the the lucian build which i was running um but i think i had just played against him enough to know what those cards were and what i needed to hold to counter those when they came out um so i kind of I feel like I, I kind of only won because I knew what he had in his deck uh, after the first game, and then I just played reactive on everything he played that I needed to deal with. Yeah, I think once you break down his actual deck, um, which I, I, I tried to myself after the tournament went off air, uh, a lot of, like you said, just isolated legendary staples that were uh, on their own just very, very powerful cards like Zeus, Maldoran, um, you know, the... 
what other what other legendary Gaia was Gaia. One that I was actually really worried about, but um, oddly enough, and I obviously didn't say anything during the finals because I didn't want to give him the idea, <laughs> but uh, he was playing it every game before Lucian hit the field. And uh, anybody I've played against that has dropped that after Lucian is out, it kind of just buys them three turns of that effect not doing anything. Uh, and that makes the deck a lot harder to play. Uh, but I kind of unintentionally circumvented that problem. <laughs> <laughs> just by having Gaia be the first card played. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 a little funny like that, how you, you overlook things. Like, and speaking of kind of combos that we... Uh, didn't expect to see and I think Bob I don't know how well you can attest to this but the the Northwood Seer combo was one that I think we eventually determined was not a a valid I guess combo going into the event like the interaction should not have worked I believe the way that it did in the actual tournament right uh, yeah I mean on the surface it doesn't look amazing and it, it wasn't intended to be a critical card that way but i think with the way the curve is and some of the higher legends that yes it, it did work out kind of well uh, it's, 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 it's just very scary because uh, the only loss i took in the tournament which put me in losers bracket which is you know how i got to the finals uh was actually from echo with the seer combo uh he was the one that knocked me into the losers bracket with that and uh I had absolutely no answer for it. Uh, so once I had played it and lost to it in the main bracket, uh, if I saw a deck was running white, I held end of days until I saw cavalry drop. <laughs> as long as I could possibly do it, because I had no way to kill, what is it, like a 5-6 on summon with a 5-5 five, five with charge or a 4-4 four, four with charge? Yeah, it's a 5-5 five, five off the cavalry leader, and then that brings out, you know, the, the possibility or the way he structured the deck was that it either bought out those two 5-6s off of both Northwood Seers, or just a 7-8 Earth Titan in the wings, just there. Um, yeah. All very, very scary to contend with uh, on their own. Um, and I don't blame you for holding end of days for as, as long as you did. Um, very, very scary stuff. But uh, going off of, I guess, the, the Seer combo, because I don't think we've expected to see that, what did you actually expect to see going in? We talked about the final strike earlier, uh, about how you know we were worried about just one of those types of decks, you know, the, the Dwarf final strike potentially making an appearance. Or is there any other deck combinations that you were aptly worried about, or at least thought maybe, maybe could have made more of an impact than they did? Uh, definitely Final Strike was the one that I was most afraid of. Um, I had been playing the Lucian deck on ladder for maybe about a week before the tournament started, and Final Strike was the deck that I was always having the most problems with, because, you know, for Lucian to be able to close out, you have to put knights on the board to get that guaranteed tower damage, and if I'm filling my board with stuff that I'm hoping can get to tower, and then everything just dies to, like, an 8-8 Final Strike, then... I don't really have tempo to get back on that in a lot of those matchups, so I was really worried that that was going to be an issue. Um, I don't know if it just wasn't present in the tournament or if I just got lucky on, you know, my branch up to the finals, but I didn't see Final Strike. Uh, I also didn't see Hydra, which I had seen uh, not too infrequently on ladder as well, and um, that is harder for my deck to deal with, but I didn't come across any sea monster decks. Um... I guess the only other one that I was afraid of, it's more in a general sense, is just any really early curve aggro deck. Uh, the Lucian deck does not handle aggro very well. No. Um, the early game is fine because you have Cleric and Pumpkin, which gives you some more resources than your deck initially holds. Uh, but like three healing on tower is not going to help you if your opponent has three units on the board that are just on your tower and they're clearing whatever you throw. So, um, yeah, it was it was really just those three. Anything that had good board clear or, like, board control. But I didn't see anything that was playing at, like, a much faster tempo than the deck that I was using. Right. Um, I bo I bo I'm trying to think of here. I think we did see a couple of aggro lists earlier, but I think by the point you where you had gotten to... 
um, they had either been knocked down or knocked out. I think people came in pretty prepared to deal with aggro, especially because of news circulating about uh, Warlock Druids being a very prevalent mess and how fast they can be hitting you. Um, the Forest Revolt Burnout combination, Rackanoth flaring off a bunch of extra burns. A lot of people were concerned about that, which I think did make it. I think Killcool was actually the player who ran, if I'm not mistaken, he might have been running warlock druid in loser's bracket i believe it's hard to it's hard to exactly remember but i believe that's about as far as i saw warlock druid go which might have been a little a little scary there um but talking about the generation we actually had a conversation yesterday about how generation is very prevalent and very important in uh in decks that we're seeing today um and I want to ask, I guess, Bob, do you do you find that you guys are pretty happy with the amount of, I guess, cards that can be generating other cards, or if you want to kind of attest to the importance of that? Uh, yeah, I, I need to be a little bit careful what I say, um, and I want to always be clear that, like, you know, Vontre beats this ship, and uh, so we do have we do have very differing. Uh, design perspectives. And I'm saying that uh, to contextualize this because a lot of what happens is I think we cover more bases because of our differential. Um, I So for instance, I am extremely non-favorable to aggro decks. I, I would, uh, if you notice the change in some of the revamps, I would almost have gutted them completely. Like I have a minimum threshold of turns that I believe should be played to have a match feel like I think the worst thing that can happen is if, if you actually have no response in a match at all, I, I think it feels horrible. But as far as like the generation, I am super ridiculously pro generation and Vontry's a little bit on the other side of that. I don't want to overspeak for him, but I personally, that's why I don't want to say for both of us, <laughs> I'm very happy with it. I don't know if he is as much, but, um, you know, I, neither one of us has that much depth, believe it or not, uh, in the genre. I only have the depth of being a Hearthstone player to, mm -hmm. like, and managing a bunch of pro Hearthstone players and then some Shadowverse people um, and some, some magic. Um, but yeah, that is definitely a thing I will do aggressively because I think, uh, again, these are stylistic things. They don't, like, you're, you have to kind of, like, both things can be right, but in a game where uh, things cycle faster and you're not seeing what you have yet, so it's uh, from kind of a emotional perspective. Um, when the hand is very static and like you like I have these four things and I add one and it's like slow, I find a lower emotional resonance than if it's like a faster this gets me this which gets me this which oh I didn't expect to get that and now I need it kind of thing. Does that make any sense to say it that way? Yeah, yeah. you're coming across pretty clear with that. I kind of see where you're yeah. coming from. So, like, yeah. So, I'm saying I'm on the high end of, like, yes. I would even do it more. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think Vontre is probably not in the same camp, though. Right, which, again, I think is a good dynamic for balancing out what we actually do see in the game. Um, giving both perspectives a chance. Maybe some stronger than others to balance out here and there. Which, I mean, I think you guys do uh, a great job of, of that sort of... that creating a, a space that I think is really, really enjoyable. Um, yeah, and, and, give, and you guys give your opinions on that. I mean, I don't want you to feel like you shouldn't challenge things or say something you noticed that maybe went too far one way, but that definitely is an overarching, like, design thing that I am going to, that I often push. Like, what is your perspective on it? Oh, we'll throw out the spaff, actually. Let's, start, let's, let's get an actual, yeah. let's go ahead and get an actual, uh... So do I, it's, do yeah, I call it's you professional player? It's before I continue, Spaff, do I do I give you that title? Would you think that uh, you can yourself that you won a tournament? Do you find yourself playing regularly on the ladder? I mean, I would. Yeah, I I do play quite a bit now. Um, I I played quite a bit before the tournament, and after winning, it definitely made me play a little bit more <laughs> than I normally would. So I've been having a ton of fun with the game. Um, I will say, uh, bouncing off that aggro point, uh after the tournament was over and i don't know whether or not it was because of the decks that echo and i had in the finals which were, were i mean 
relatively slow early, and then they curved into a very powerful mid and late game for both decks. Um, I felt like I only saw aggro decks for like the first week after the tournament, and I found really quickly that uh, the Lucian deck d performs really poorly into it. Um, and so there was definitely a day or two where I was getting very frustrated because I was like, man, did I just like, like, steal that tournament because I didn't find any <laughs> aggro decks? Or is it just like a meta shift because of it? Uh, and then over the last week, I've actually been p playing an aggro deck uh, that I have kind of stolen from a couple things I've seen on ladder. Um, and I, I kind of agree with you uh, that as fun as it is to win the game in four or five turns, I can see how it would be very unfun or uninteractive for someone on the receiving end of that because when i was on the receiving end of it on ladder uh, it felt horrible to have my tower be at four hp on turn four and have three units on the board that are within you know lethal of me and i can only summon with the deck that i was running the one that won the tournament i could only summon one or two units a turn and like a pegacorn isn't going to stop that despite how strong the card is um and so, yeah, I mean, I would I would agree. I think that aggro is very fun. Uh, I, I do have experience with other card games, but this one is so much more unique in the fact that you do have a board involved with it. And aggro kind of takes a different stance in my mind in a game like this, because like in any other card game, you might have a turn where you can, you know, flip the script very quickly. But in this, you need to clear the board, get units on the board, and unless you have spells that are dealing something straight to the tower, you don't really feel like you can actually like get that damage tempo back until they don't have anything out. And it it really feels like an uphill battle against aggro decks if your deck doesn't have a proper answer to it. So I know that yeah. was a little bit of a long-winded answer. No. I've been on both sides of that coin. <laughs> uh, it's real fun to win with Lucian when they have nothing left to put on the board. It's really frustrating to lose to aggro when you don't have cards that can compete with it in the first four or five turns of the game right so and right i have a little bit more like to bounce off that um because at a high level that's sort of the argument uh so again not trying to speak for someone else but we've had discussions of like well that's kind of the point to stop the spaths of the game right like <laughs> meaning we don't we do want aggro to exist because it forces you to limit your capabilities on what you can actually do or you have to attack basically because otherwise you can just literally just take this perfect curve long thing that just pushes through everything else because its value is so high or its synergy is so good we actually like want you to be scared so now you can't have your deck exactly as you want you have to like force yourself to have some early protection that's sort of the the other argument i'm less for that personally but that I, I understand why that makes sense as far as like something we find in the tournament guys like um this is a thing i mean I, the data supports it there and i'm not looking at it now is this people that compete in the tournament tend to run mid-range control longer curved decks at a proportion that's way higher than the ladder um i think that ladder people there's something to be said about like i'm gonna get it done fast so like you win or lose fast if you're aggro and if you're climbing um that is technically better uh to do it that way whereas if you're in a tournament uh it's not ideal because it doesn't take much to put you out of the tournament if that kind of explains i'm saying that differential isn't just reactionary it's actually always been that way and i know essentially i think the almost the entirety of the game has been that way thinking about it i mean because i i have been doing exactly what you just said which was i played that slower like late game power deck in the tourney and then once i got back to ladder it it, it did kind of feel like that deck it doesn't perform as well when people are less scared of the being knocked out mentality yep. and mm -hmm. I, I it kind of makes me sad because i wish that wasn't so data prevalent because i would like to see aggro decks like have more of that play style in tourneys but i mean you're right the reason i've been playing an aggro deck on ladder is because like if i have an hour to play games i would rather be able to knock out five games in an hour or ten games in an hour because i can win or lose in the first five turns versus like 
I'm playing to get Lucian out on turn nine and then trying to win from there, which might be two games in an hour, depending on how long the decks go. So, yeah, I mean, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and I deal with it myself because I don't, again, I'm very anti-aggro because of the reasons I stated. I almost never play aggro. I don't play ladder that much, if you've noticed. But, like, <laughs> when I do, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can't. I can already tell I can't win on turn four, prop like most likely. And, um, you know, it's it's something you'll see a lot. But I saw it. I see this in other card games too, uh, especially when you're climbing, because it's just a time constraint thing, and people have different goals with their time constraint. And they're. It's also. I don't want to like give away too much of the sauce, but it's also the nature of the way ranking and MMR plus stars and Elo kind of work. Um, they're there's some advantage i don't want to like over explain that but like does that if you can see what i'm saying there's some advantage to like it's if even if you go even you can still climb at certain ranks for instance so yeah. it's actually better to have matches it's better to have like three wins and three losses than like really slow one win right or like one win one loss kind of stuff so there there are like drivers in the like that do that um but yeah like i I think that's part of this, and, and honestly, I, I'm open to any ideas too. Um, and and it could be a tournament format thing as well that could kind of change the nature of that. But I do think you need everything to make the game complete. And I do think I do agree to, you know, some. I do agree to a large part that you do need some fear of the like overly strong decks because it, back ended curve decks, when they run away, they can like really run away. And so like. That's the other side of the coin. Like you could say, well, in an aggro deck, the game's kind of over early, but then you could say on the other side of like, hey, I'm smart my deck at this point, you're not going to beat me. Like I've gotten everything down. So my power curve is just going to be too high. And as we play to the end of our decks, we, you know, most people are dead already. They just don't know it. I don't, is that, would you say like that? That's how it goes, Spath? Yeah, I would I would say so. Um, I mean, I kind of mentioned it earlier at the start of this, um, but I felt like if I knew the deck that my opponent was playing, or I knew some specific threat that I felt my deck struggled with specifically, um, as long as I could foresee that and play the waiting game on those things, I did feel like there was a clock on my deck where like once Lucene was out and I felt like I had just a smidgen of board control, I felt like I could reliably win from every position from there because like being able to use Meek to get like what is an effective blaze uh, on the opponent's board, which gives you two units, sometimes more if you've got stuff that's already dead and uh, being able to kind of set up a Holy Avenger play with your own end of days and I don't know. It just felt like there were so many different avenues I had to create pressure once Lucian had hit the board. Um, if I got to that point, yeah, it, it didn't really feel like there were a lot of decks that... Not saying I'm like playing like a genius by any means, it just felt like that curve gave me the ability to not have a lot of problems that the meta had built around. That makes a lot of sense, and I, 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 I'm glad like to hear it from you directly, because... A lot of this is, you know, we, we're we're running off a lot of data and we're running off a lot of just like, hey, this is a new set of cards. Like, we don't yet completely know. And that's that helps flesh it out. Um, I do have a question uh, for you guys is, were you guys surprised to not see any, especially you read being around for such a long time, any major changes after the tournament to cards? Did that surprise you at all? It, yeah. Uh, it, it definitely did. Usually, like, from prior experiences and other tournaments, usually there's a couple of things that are hit, like, you know, within the, the next 24, 48 hours of an event happening. Uh, it was shocking to see uh, this one not be uh, addressed, but I, I think after hearing some of the points that you've made, um, I can kind of see why. There's there, I, I, and even you stated in in the uh, announcement. I feel like there wasn't really a, a huge need to change anything massively to the degree that uh, you guys tend to shake things up after an event to kind of give it that fresh coat of paint. Yeah, and um, I don't. It's not laziness. I mean, I, obviously, you have to take my word for it. But um, it had to do with 
you know, a lot of the times these tournaments, we get to see people like Spaff and Echo and, you know, everyone. And it actually, because the set came out so recently, like the meta, it's almost like an acceleration of the development of where the potential meta could go. Uh, you know, obviously the game has enough complexity. I would say that it's not like a foregone conclusion, but that is, you know, there's another purpose. If you could see it from our point of view to have a tournament, it's like, well... We don't have a million testers in beta, so let's. These guys are sort of showing us what like we didn't think would be amazing to play, uh, and in this case, this was, I would say, the first time uh, we were happy with the level. And I don't want to say like, oh, we're super unhappy. It's just like we're like, wow, you know, I think a lot of things actually worked, and it, it wasn't like like this is just a contrast. Say like, do you remember back in the the Ragnar, the early Ragnar days, Red, where he was like... I remember you... my my extreme, like, the highest pitch I've ever gone in a casting. Uh, I remember having that moment because Ragnar hit the board, all the cards got resurrected, and then just lightning flew everywhere. That's what I remember. And I, I right. still look back at the YouTube clip about just... Not because I'm trying to see how high my voice actually went, uh, but to revisit that and to go over like, yeah, there was so much happening at that moment and everything. The it just was a it just was chaos. It was it was chaos to put it to put it lightly. I both loved it, but knew it was not going to be sustainable <laughs> long term for the game. It was actually uh, that was probably my favorite, second, first, or favorite thing ever in the game ever, and I I helped design that early so i was like this is so cool and then i like we later realized oh shit, oh shit right like this is, this is <laughs> way too broken no and so this was the first tournament where uh, the range was kind of like you know I, I actually think that when people go play ladder you, you can't just copy you know spaff's deck for instance and just and just expect to win all the time i i think and and that's not because it's not excellent. It, I mean, you won the tournament, man. You, you did a great job. And I think you were very clever and, like, you had very good practice, obviously. But We had the spaff sort of staffers like... in chat rise up and, and support him through the whole way. I, we'll, we'll get back to that in a second, but, Bob, to continue yeah. your point. That's, that's really the point is that is, is that it's, you know, with a small team, it takes a long time to both have balance and enough play styles to be, like, hey, like, you can still figure new things out and the meta isn't solved, so to speak. And this is, we finally hit that note where uh, we don't have an obvious, all the, like, this also happened back when we had the, like, undead screams stuff, if you remember, was kind of a little bit of the same thing of, like, huh, as we get near the finals, a lot of people have a similar flavored deck here. What is going on? Um, this wasn't quite like that as much for us. So we were very happy with that. Yeah, that's good to see. That's good to see kind of things to progressing, taking shape, and evolving into the scene that we have today. It's phenomenal. Uh, but let me go back to the the tournament here. Well, let's let's transition back um, and and kind of uh, break break down some some more fun aspects for for I think that uh, some people might love to hear about. Um, firstly, staff uh, staff. We we have to talk. We have to talk about the spaff staffers um the i i don't know if you got any of that i don't know if you 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 saw the movement that people were kind of bringing up there uh, did did that like give you any confidence boosting did that make you you know did any any sort of support i i just got it like that's more of a personal question but i just i just really am curious <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it was it was fun. It, it was fun to see that I somehow became the uh, the underdog in the tournament, <laughs> which I thought was so funny because I was playing the person that beat me in the first place in the finals. But um, no, it was uh, it was definitely enjoyable. Uh, I, the, the buddies that I said that I've been playing with recently, they were like, they're rooting for you in chat. You have to win. <laughs> they're calling you the people's champion. And I was the like, I got to deafen. I need to focus or else I'm going to lose all of these games. That's awesome. <sighs> but no, it was, uh, it, I, the community just seems great. Uh, and ever since the tournament ended, I've been, everyone on ladder I, seems to be recognizing my username. So everyone's adding me after games now. So I feel like I'm actually getting to like, 
talk to people more and I'm recognizing names in the Discord more and so it's it's been great. Everybody has been very warm and welcoming. That's incredible to hear. No, uh, no, no trolls, no like staff, you <laughs> son of a gun. No, of that. no, not at all. And I mean, kind of. Bob, they back, saved that for me. They saved that for me these <laughs> days. Um, I actually did want to comment on the seer thing uh, because I know that there were a handful of people that were like, "Is this an interaction? Is this intentional?" Uh, da 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 da. And I actually wanted to give Echo a ton of credit because um, whether or not the interaction was intentional, I felt like he built a very clever, intentional deck around that interaction because, I mean, there there were windows where, you know, you could get that to happen every game. And, like, again, I've I've been playing video games all my life, and I have always been from the stance of if it is in the game and it's good, whether or not it's intentional, play it. And if it's problematic enough, it'll get fixed. And if it's not, you found something cool. And I think Echo found something really, really cool with that. Wow, Spout just didn't describe game design just completely right there. <laughs> never, I'm going to ask you guys and, and Red, and anyone, if I'm ever in an interview, never ask me, was that interaction intentional? Please don't ask that question. If that doesn't tell you what the answer is, that is, yeah, that that's that's a good way to to take it. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, shoot, I had what I had a point here. Oh, right. Uh, so, f- fondly enough, uh, Echo yesterday, and I, I think this is just uh, in case you wanted to know, Spaf. Uh, he mentioned that he he had found it like a week before the tournament as an interaction on on ladder, and just picked it up and was like, oh. That's cool. I'm gonna use that now, and it's just the, the it's just the cycle of of card games. You see something cool, you pick it up, you have a lot of fun with it. Um, but how about let let so would you? I well, hmm. I was about to say because we could we can go back to I guess Echo as a player, but uh, did you uh, spaff? Because I asked Echo this again. Did you enjoy the performance, or I guess were were kind of keen in on any of the other players in the event? Um, I don't know if you had eyes on, you know, as the brackets kind of continued and people kind of progressed alongside you. Uh, who did you who did you feel like you were going to see, or who you were you kind of watching out for um, before even uh, Echo? Maybe uh, Cookie was definitely someone who I did not want to face in the bracket. Uh, and uh, I thankfully didn't have to because uh, I'm sure if you've seen in the Discord, uh, I didn't make the deck that I played. I actually mm-hmm. asked a handful of people about if there were any good Lucian decks out there, and Cookie slid me the deck code, and I found out later that him and Death's Advocate had kind of like workshopped that deck together, uh, and I reached out about a Lucian deck because he's my favorite card. I think he's really cool. And I was like, if this is my first tournament, I'm going to play something that I think I'll have fun with. So I wanted to play a deck that had that. Uh, and it seemed like it had a very standard, like original, like a, like a normal curve. Um, and so it felt reliable. Um, but I was worried about facing either of them in the tournament because they built the deck. And I was worried that if I played them, they would just be able to, you know, completely piece it apart and know exactly how i had to operate without me knowing what they were playing um like i said i was worried about any aggro decks um but i didn't know who was going to be bringing those so i didn't have any specific players in mind um but i mean after i lost to echo in the winner's bracket the first time i definitely was hoping somebody else would beat him if i managed to make it back and so i was very very nervous going into finals because i was like Ah, crap, like, I'm gonna get seared to death here, and this is just gonna be so not fun, but, uh, again, it was just a matter of, like, I I knew it was in the deck, and I felt like I could play better around it, not being surprised by it that time. Right, exactly. Hmm. I think they're all great players. I mean, I, I didn't feel like there was anyone I played against that played poorly. I didn't feel like it. there were games where I felt um, were... I mean, okay, this might be the wrong way to put it. I didn't feel like there was anyone that felt too easy to play against. I also didn't feel like there was anyone that felt too difficult to play against. There were some games that went long, um, but those windows didn't feel bad because my deck excels in the late game. Uh, But 
yeah. I, it's I'm fair to say think... that I think you you enjoyed the competition all around, yes. and everyone yeah. was kind of bringing their all. You felt that in the games. You felt that, um, you know, no matter what outcome was going to happen, if you were going to win or you were going to lose, everyone kind of showed up with their best performance in a way, and I think that's the best way to leave a tournament, knowing that you faced people who bring their best, who bring their A game to the table and kind of surpass that in your own way. Um and yeah, I mean, to, your, to, you, to what you were saying, a lot of great people were involved in this. You know, Cookie, DA, a couple of people who played in our other events, former winners signed up for this as well. So a lot of talent all around. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that it just was such an amazing time for everyone involved, uh, no matter if they were a player or any other uh, any of the other roles that uh, we, we had as, as, a, as a part of this tournament. Um, and I guess that takes us to now, uh, Spav. I mean, you mentioned that you were, you were playing or that you have been playing on ladder and that you have been taking, uh, some aggro to, to ladder or to any sort of play that you do, um, here and there. Um, how, I mean, post tournament, um, you know, how do you, how do you feel that the, or how do you feel about the state of the game? as it is now um coming from someone who delivered a, a performance uh who people knew like, people kind of had an idea of like this is the deck that you you have and they're gonna see you come on with it was there any expectations like that, that you were nervous about or just just some overall like some some post thoughts uh i was definitely uh, immediately after the tournament uh Happy to have won, obviously, but I was also like, well, okay, I'm going to start seeing Lucian and Calvary Seer everywhere on ladder. And I was I, I was happy to not feel like the ladder was flooded with that. I did see both a couple of times. Um, but yeah, uh, on the point that you mentioned about like the aggro deck that I have been playing, um, I think aggro has a a very very valid spot in the meta right now that i don't know if i would go as far as to say was overlooked in the tournament but for the reasons you said where aggro is tends to be sink or swim um i think having both of the tournament finalist decks be things that are very weak to aggro kind of created this weird pocket in the meta that i've seen on ladder where uh, i think a lot of people saw those curves and thought okay that's the curve that i need to be playing that's the kind of curve that's going to make a deck successful and with that, there just became this huge opportunity for very quick early aggro decks to completely stomp those decks on ladder. And uh, there was a... I don't want to go into too much detail about the cards involved, but I think there are some absolutely insane ninja cards that have come in new um, that would have performed very, very, very well in the tournament. Um, but I don't think any of those decks had been fully flourished yet at the time, and I, maybe that's why no one was playing them. But um, I played against someone that had um, like an early purple-black combo, and I played them on ladder three times in a day, and I, in a collective, I think, 12 turns, lost three games. Uh, I had absolutely no answer for it. It was an incredibly fast deck, and... I did my best to try to emulate it, and I've been tweaking it over the last week, and I think there are some very interesting untouched aggro options in the ninja archetype that I'm hoping don't get too popular, but they're they're very fun to play. I like a lot of the new cards that kind of opened that up for a possibility. Um, but yeah, I think aggro is, in my experience, it feels like, kind of the strongest part of the meta at the moment because i feel like much of the game developed around the idea of these big late game combos or like a legendary that you play for near the end like lucian or anvor or you know these just big bodies like maldron or nadir or you know Morden off that you just want to end the game with uh and if you can end the game before anything like that ever hits the board i don't think that that is a non-viable strategy and i think it's really strong right now yeah to your credit, I believe I've also run into the same uh, Ninja Necromancer build. I know the name who I associate it with. You might have gotten it from someone different. Unless we're thinking of the same the same man who starts with the letter H. Uh, it is definitely <laughs> the same man. I, the first time I played against it, I was like, 
was my monitor off? Like, was I just not playing the game and, like, I was zoning out and I lost? And I was like, whatever, chalk it up to not paying attention. And then it happened two more times. And I was like, that deck sucks to play against. That deck <laughs> is really good. And so that was what I tried to make my own. Yeah, and to your credit as well, I also took a shot at it after seeing it just because I think when I saw the pieces just in my mind, I guess, with how well they blended together, I, I got happy. You know, my little card brain was like, you know, all oh, these look so good together. These feel great together. And I at least wanted to give it a shot. I think mm -hmm. uh, I think that's definitely what the point I gravitated towards. Um to this day, I think I had a little bit more trouble with it, but I think that's just because uh, I'm someone who is built for more control. Um, I always have felt like my playstyle is, is geared in that direction, any sort of card game. So maybe a bit harder for me to pick up on just pure in-your-face beatdown type, which I feel like uh, was the aim of that specific list. Um, but I still tried it, and I still have fun with it. I still have it. Um, I don't know if it's to the exact of, of what I ran up against. But, hey, I, I think I think it was pretty fun. And who knows? Who knows where that's going to go in the future, whether or not we see more of it as a result of more mid-late game strategies unfold, like you mentioned, or if just people want to put it together because it is... It is in it itself. It's a puzzle to figure out. It, it felt like a puzzle to kind of put together. You know, how do I reach this uh, or or steal this game up and in this amount of time with these resources, um, which I think people do do enjoy. Um, I was pretty happy. I mean, honestly, seeing it, there was a moment of clarity for me where I was actually. I remember being very frustrated the first two times, or the, I guess it was the third time that I lost to the deck. Because the first time I was like, "Man, whatever, weird deck," <laughs> uh, and I was like, "Man, like that makes me angry." And then I was like, "Well." It actually kind of makes me happy that I'm, I consistently lost with a deck that I feel like I could validate as a good deck, uh, to something I hadn't seen at all before that included cards from the new set, and that made me really happy. And then I was like, that's why I wanted to play it. But I, I'm also really happy that nothing got buffed or nerfed after the tournament, um, because I know that you know there were a lot of people that thought both of the decks that were in the finals had things that were overtly strong or like didn't have ways to deal with them uh and from my experience on ladder i didn't feel like that was the case at all uh the practice that i got on that lucian deck i wasn't power climbing by any means i was going i mean maybe slightly better than 50 percent um i definitely got to see a lot of decks but i didn't feel like i was going into the tournament with a deck that i thought was going to surefire win it um so coming out and seeing that like not only myself but the devs were happy with the performance and the showing and the cards that were used I, I was excited that it was it kind of almost came across more as like here's a tournament as an exhibition of all the new things and we're not changing anything and i liked that because i would have hated to have to reevaluate everything i knew now about the new set after only like i don't even remember i don't even think it was like two weeks uh that then would have to change based on what gets buffed or nerfed but uh Nadir might be strong, but I think outside <laughs> of that, everything else is in a wonderful spot. Uh, I, I actually, there's a handful of things that I would like to see buffed because I think that there's some opportunities for cards that I didn't really see at all uh, to have some windows in the meta. But things like Zeus, for example, um, I love. I think the card's amazing. Um, I know that it seems to be the general consistent consensus that he can be splashed in any deck, and I would agree. I think he's not overpowered, but he's a great staple. But there are some cards that uh, want to run things like Beamothra, but cannot run Zeus because they're cost. And so I think there are a handful of legendaries that are kind of locked out of this new... I don't know if I want to call Zeus a meta in and of its own, but, like, there are some designs that, like, it sounds good for a card to be cheaper, but might actually lock a card out of something like that, for example. But The Zeus I'm, zone, so to speak. The Zeus zone, yeah. And, I mean, <laughs> a lot of the decks that me and my, like, tiny circle of friends that play together, uh, we love, like... Beamothra into something for a deck design. Uh, I love neutral cards that feel like you can use them anywhere. Uh, and one of my friends loves Anvor. When we started playing the game again, he was like, 
you love Lucian, I love Anvor. This is super cool. And after the, the new stuff dropped and we were like, oh, Spaff gets to run Zeus and be a Mothra in his deck, but I cannot run Zeus and Anvor in my deck because I also want to run Nadir in my deck. And then I'm like coin tossing on how quickly I can get that thing out. Even though all those cards synergize together, uh, we he's found it to be a lot harder to build a deck around like a card like that, even though it being eight cost is cheaper than Lucian. Lucian being nine cost actually opens him up to, you know, a, a new array of cards that you can't run with something that you need for a continuous board effect like Anvor to get out early. But I think the state of the the game is amazing right now. Um, I don't think that there's anything that needs to be nerfed. I don't think that there's anything that needs to be like adjusted. I, I'm having a ton of fun on ladder. I'm seeing new stuff every day, so I, I don't really have any complaints myself. <laughs> That's great to hear. I mean, Bob, that's gonna make you ecstatic. I mean, uh, it's fantastic to hear. And, and Spaff, I know you're. You know, I'm here. You, you know, I really appreciate that. And I'm Vontre will love hearing this. If there are things, don't feel like. I mean, obviously, if we don't want to talk about them now, we value all like anyone playing at the level you're playing at. We value your opinion extremely highly. So don't be afraid to like DM me. Like, actually, though, but this one thing. That is totally, like, I, I want to, like, have kind of an open, like, thank you for saying that. It feels great. Also feel like I'm open to you uh, and receptive. You know, we can't just change everything, right? But, like, right. I am receptive to things like what you just said about, like, Behemothra stuff. Like, these, the are, these are good things to know. The Zeus Zone. This is something that, like, we'll probably look at a little bit. So, but, I mean, we love hearing that. It took us a long time. I mean, like like a year <laughs> to get to the point that we that we're close to where we really want to be with that kind of balance i mean i personally love the new expansion i think it added a ton of new stuff i think it did a phenomenal job of adding new archetypes in and of itself peasant fan myself <laughs> but also adding a lot of cards that i would go all the way on the end to say like for certain archetypes there are new cards that I think must go in every deck. Uh, like, I, I, I was going to say this earlier. I felt kind of bad. The deck that I won with, I think I only used two new cards. But they were so what I felt necessary in the archetype. It was, it was Voodoo Doll and Holy Avenger. Uh, Holy Avenger, I just felt like, was a great late game swing. But I think Voodoo Doll, in my opinion, is one of the best cards in the new set I, I think the value that that gives in both early aggro and decks like the lucian deck to just keep the ball rolling in the early game um i don't know i felt like i got a lot of that from the new expansion like there's a lot of things where i'm like oh my god like this is exactly what i wanted for this archetype or it felt it fills a void that i felt like the curve of this needed or stuff along that line so yeah no i mean i was very pleased with it super glad to hear that Love that. <laughs> Love yeah. that. And I could be sure that, uh, you know, there might be more like that down the line, but we won't talk about that here, of course. We won't uh, We won't give anything away. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bob, do you have any uh, other other points here that you want to you wanna ask Spaff directly? I mean, uh, as I'm, I th I'm trying to pick back up my own points, I think. I'm trying to see if there's anything left, but I think you've been sitting on some, maybe some for a while, so feel free. Um, well, I can always talk, so that is, that I'm more of the talker of the dev. Um, my question I would have, because it's been a long interview, I don't want it to be like, you know, I don't want these forms to be too long to get through, even though I think everything I've heard is super important and interesting. But my, my question is that as the people's champion... <laughs> Do you personally stream or create content, or do you have interest in doing that? That is that is my question. Yeah, uh, actually, I, I used to stream quite a bit all the time, and I've been uh, slowly trying to get my footing on a schedule to do it again. Uh, I, I did stream on Twitch. I do stream on Twitch. Um, I haven't streamed this game yet because I have gotten back into it in the hiatus that I've had from streaming, but... Uh, I actually have not spent any of the silver that I got from winning yet because I want to do a card opening on stream with all the packs. So uh, I do plan to start up again soon. Um, and I think this is kind of like a perfect game for me to stream because I found that 
Um, competitive games, I, I wasn't able to interact with chat as much because I'm zoned in on the game, and I also felt like some long, like, form uh, single-player games, like I used to stream a little bit of Elden Ring. Uh, I, I felt like I wasn't focusing as much on these beautiful games that I wanted to play as I was with chat, and I feel like this is one where it's it's slow enough of a game where I can actually read chat like in between turns and stuff, but fast enough a game where it scratches my thinking itch for my brain. So, uh, yes, I think I think I am going to start doing that a lot more. We'd love to see it. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll happily promote you. So oh, thank you. Please, please know, I, I know I say this a lot, but I want like, you know, you absolutely can DM me personally. I say me personally because it's not Vontre. Vontre does not do does not do that as much um uh, of the two of us and obviously there's a couple other people but um if you know if you're getting into that we have channels to post it we will promote you you know a lot i mean you're tournament winner we have channels to like you know we want to support new players we want to support our community we want to support thinkers with with new decks so just you know i i hope you do it and uh we su will support you any way we can I appreciate that. I mean, I'm happy to, you know, help create any kind of content for this game as well. Uh, I loved, loved this game in high school. And the only reason I had stopped back then was I got to college and got busy. But uh, this game, the design of it has always held a very special place in my heart. And I was so happy when I saw that there was a second game. Uh, when I re-downloaded this, and I have had nothing but fun playing it since then. And my friends have too. They've had a ton of fun, and all of us have gone in multiple different directions with the decks we like and the archetypes we enjoy and the playstyles we like. So there has been no shortage of like variety with what we've been able to experience both on ladder and playing, you know, just with the, the friend group that we have. I'd love to hear that. Yeah. That's all the questions I had. I mean, we heard yeah. it from the, the champion, the champion, the people's champion himself. People's yeah. And champion. I think, I think, uh, I think it's a good place for us to, to wrap things up. So, uh, folks, that has been that has been Spaff. If you want to catch more of him, uh, we'll put his stuff uh, down below. If you want to find more of myself, I'll also be down there. And uh, be sure to support the Cards and Castles channel here, as well as on all of the Cards and Castles socials for more Cards and Castles content. Um, you know, subscribe to the YouTube, check out the Discord, um, hop on other social medias. I believe we're on TikTok and Twitter, right, Bob? Uh, among other things. We are. We still have a Facebook. Uh, from, <laughs> mostly from Team One, we have the Reddit. Uh, we definitely have the Twitter. The TikToks. Uh, we don't have a person on it right now. We have it, but we don't have like a social media person that's like on top of it at the right. moment. But yeah, all of them. Uh, people come from all these groups, and they, you know, we do. We do appreciate the support. We haven't pushed them for a long time, and that's why we're making this content, and and we are doing a push to to re-engage because we're finding a lot of our best feedback uh, and helping the community learn how to play, how to, you know, what they enjoy. Um, it's coming from these social channels, yeah. Right, and so you can expect more of us here on the Cards and Castles channel, whether it be myself, other red team uh, representatives, or maybe even players like yourself or Spath here. All have a chance of being on this wonderful channel to uh, explore the card game that we all love and hold so dear to our heart. But for everyone here, folks, I've been uh, Redmaster. This has been Cards and Castles, and until next time, see you later. <laughs>